Hello, YouTube. <laughs> All right, today we're gonna do a little uh, repair or reconstruction project here on Little Blue 2. As you can see, my um, bar here that I mounted for the, the front curtain area to separate the living quarters from the uh, driver's cockpit here is a little bit um, worse for the wear. It's been probably, what, about a year since I replaced it, maybe a year and a half. And because of me going in and out, in and out through here and catching on the, um, the curtains, it's gotten a little bit flimsy. I mean, I guess it's still usable, but I figured, what the hey, let's go ahead and uh, replace it. So what I did was I just basically bought one of these uh, curtain rod things. You've seen me talk about it before, but it's one of these U, see how it has like a U shape on the end? Curtain rods. And, and I got this thick one that is designed for um, 48 to 86 inches. It's a heavy duty one because it almost goes across like this. I only have to stretch it out a little bit. And what that does is makes it a little bit stronger because it'll have um, the metal support, you know, like a double layer of it going really far, almost across the entire width of the, um, the van here. That should make it a little bit stronger. And that's all we're gonna do is just replace the bar. And to replace the bar, what I'm gonna be doing is just hammering this out. I'm gonna take this piece here and bend it out straight. Then I'm gonna take a nail or something and, and punch in a little hole, and then I'll be screwing it in. So I don't know if you actually need to see the construction because it's just a matter of taking this out of the bag, taking my hammer here. I have a beat up hammer here. One of my uh, Hessler knife demo hammers. You can see it actually did get cut through. <laughs> but I'm gonna take this hammer and I'm gonna straighten this out, punch a hole and screw it in. And that's it. Well, I've got to thread the, um, the curtains. So stay tuned and I'll show you the results. All right, as you can see, I've removed the, um, the beam from the packet and I'm gonna hammer it. You also notice I have a piece of wood that I carry around with me. Isn't that kind of crazy? Yeah, but it's useful for projects like this where I have to take this and straighten it out. So I'm probably gonna put my foot on it or whatever and try to straighten it out a little bit and then hammer it out so that it becomes one straight solid piece versus um, the U-shape right now. I am going to attempt to bend it using my feet and you can see I'm just kind of straightening it out a little bit. You can see it's starting to not straighten out. So, I mean, it is somewhat straightened, but I'm going to need to straighten more. And if I keep bending, it'll bend right there at this junction. And I don't want that. So I'm going to take uh, my hammer and start doing the rest. But we'll go ahead and do the other side to, to start the bend. So I just put my, my foot on here. Try to come down close here and kind of... Straighten it out a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, the, the better you can make the uh, the transition to it being flat, you know, the, the nicer everything will look. So now it's just a matter of taking my hammer and trying to hammer that down. I won't be able to film this because obviously I can't film and straighten it out. So I'm going to go ahead and hammer it down and show you the results. Here then is what the flattened end piece looks like. You can see I flattened it out and I even flattened the little curved area there. Just using the hammer and carefully banging it, one, you know, this side and then alternating back and forth to try to get it flat. I didn't flatten the whole thing because you need that to slide to adjust. But also, I think it's stronger when there's a curve versus you know just making it one flat piece. But we're just going to put a little hole here, and to do that, I'm just simply going to try to find a nail or a screw and hammer it in to start the hole. So we'll do that for each side here. As you can see, I found an old screw here, a little rusty screw that I had laying around. And I just simply took my hammer, hammered it in to start the hole here. And, you know, I'll be wiggling the screw inside to make the hole whatever size it needs to be. But keep it as small as possible. Just small enough for the, um, the screw here that will be attaching it into place. And I'm going to do one. I'm going to do one for each side so that it... Um, will stay in place and that's all we're gonna do and that's pretty much it as far as construction not really that big a project it takes only a few minutes this uh, rod itself it's like less than three dollars at Walmart and some of you are wondering why I still shop at Walmart it's because it's uh, got good prices and it's pretty much got all the supplies I need 
And we'll talk a little bit more about that in an upcoming video, but um, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with Walmart per se as far as their prices and stuff like that. But their hiring policies and stuff, they really do need to assess that. And I think it's um, going to be their downfall because, you know, a company is only as good as the, the people it employs and, and how well it treats those employees. So that's something that Walmart really needs to look at because they're going to fail if they continue on their uh, present trend of cheating the people as they do the, um, the actual merchandise in the sense that, you know, they're mass. They think that they have an unlimited workforce and the reality is they don't. So anyhow, let's get, let's get back to, um, to creating this. So I'm going to go ahead and put a hole on the other side, um, you know, punch a hole on the other side just like this, wiggle it a little bit, then um, thread the, the unit and put it together and show you what the end result looks like. This is the other side, and you can see this, this board that I brought is actually pretty handy. So it may not hurt to carry a little tiny scrap piece of wood in your your vehicle, your van, or car, or whatever, just in case you have to do a quick uh, construction project like this where you need a hammering surface that you don't mind, you know, putting holes in. So I'm going to go ahead and, and straighten this out and then go ahead and uh, put the unit together to show you what the curtain rod looks like with the curtain in place. I've flattened out my new rod right here, as you can see. So it's ready to be mounted here very soon. And I need to remove the old one, so we're just simply going to unscrew this. I just had to buy a brand new screwdriver because I could misplace my screwdrivers. But we're just going to unscrew this and then um, take it down, take the curtain out of this one and put it into the, the new one. It's just the plan here. Since I had uh, this thing down, I, I thought I might as well go ahead and fix this part which was kind of falling off. And all I did was just push it up and kind of screw this into place to kind of hold it in. This is my little hook for um, mounting a little bag, my little bag of junk. So we'll go ahead and take the, the curtains out now and put the new one into place on this side and we'll do the other side. So the curtains just come right out. And this is going to be our old piece here. Go ahead and put the new one, we'll thread the new curtain in and then mount it before we take the other side off. I have uh, threaded in the new curtain rod and now it's just a matter of mounting it. You might notice I, this um, curtain thing has two holes, the top and the bottom. I went through the bottom so that this top part will kind of help block off more of the gap here. Hopefully you understand it once I put it into place, you'll see what I'm talking about. See, there's two, two holes for where the, the rod can go, and I put it on the bottom one so that there'll be more of a fringe on top to help block the gap that would occur up here at the top. Once the, uh, the rod is, you know, like, threaded, it's just a matter of screwing it in. And we're going to be doing the same on the other side. I'll be removing the, old, the curtain off the old rod, and then um, screwing in the new rod. That's pretty much it. Not really much to this portion of it. I did want to point out that you'll notice I put the curtain with the, uh, the black side facing out and the light side facing in. I did that because from the front of the vehicle, and the same with the side windows, when you have the black, you know, it, it, it just looks like you blacked out the, um, the inside of the vehicle. So I didn't put the decorative part, which is uh, the colored part on the inside, because I prefer it to be lighter on the inside also versus like putting black curtains and it would look really dark and gloomy inside. I like things kind of like bright and airy looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and show you the end results here. Camera's like having a hard time focusing for some reason. As you can see, I am removing this other side with the curtain on it. And we're gonna try to fix this too because it's kind of separating, you know, from the, the vehicle frame. So we'll take the time to fix all this. But I am gonna unscrew this re-thread it into this new one right here and this project will be done I have removed the the old rod right here you can see it's been removed all curved and bent and we are going to re-thread this uh, rod here into the second hole the bottom one because we want this fringe to help block the um, the space here that exists 
As you can see, I've uh, tried to fix this side too by uh, shoving the, the plastic um, liner thingy underneath the rubber so that it's, you know, it just looks better. Now, I do have an issue here because apparently I, the holes do not line up, so I must have had like a smaller piece before. So what I'm going to do is uh, try to bend this or something because I can't, I don't want this sticking out on the seal. So I'm just going to bend this to break it off or something. And I may have to make a new hole or a line up. See, the holes aren't lining up. I could drill a new hole or punch in a new hole, which is what I may do. But I am going to, to bend this, this piece of metal here. This hole doesn't line up. So it's because this rod, I wonder if I can slide it in more. Nope, it's in as far as it goes. That's as far as the rod wants to go. See, the other end is what we're looking at. That's as far as it wants to slide. Maybe I'll squish it a little bit and have it slide a little bit more. Because I want the holes to line up. Then I don't have to deal with this. So let me see if I can squish that side a little to get it slide a little bit more. I decided the best thing to do was actually to just go ahead and curl the end here. Then I'll make it a little bit stronger. And, you know, have it out of the way when the door shuts. And to um, punch a new hole. This is the old hole right here that I made. So I punched a new hole right at the same spot. And how I did it was I just lined it up. You know, lined up the piece, looked where the hole was. Took my screwdriver and I shoved it in and made a little point. Then I took the screw and just simply started screwing it in at that point right there. And that lines it up. So the new rod is straight. And now you can see what I'm talking about, the fringe here. So it sticks up on top. It helps to close this air gap right here so that from outside people don't see light in here when you have the light on. And that's pretty much it, so let me finish screwing this in and I'll show you the, the end results. Just simply screwing it in. Here then is the end results. As you can see, the curtains go all the way across. I do have my, um, my, my fan there, and it's okay. It's not a big deal. I can remove it if I need to to completely shut the curtain, but I don't need to. And everything can slide back and forth. See so yeah, how that opens and shuts. Nice and easy. And it's a little bit stronger now. Still flexible. And the reason I like this, using this rod, is it's adjustable. So you can adjust it to the exact size because, you know, it slides in and out. You know, and it's cheap. It's like uh, $3 for the rod, less than $3. This is mounted. On this end, I do have the TV mount here, so it can't go all the way. But I don't need it to. I just slide this part up here to cover this little gap. It doesn't have to be like perfect, you know. Um, the seal doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to, to block off like, you know, any um, light when you're back here. You don't want people walking by and seeing. And typically I'll put up a sunshade so they don't really see it anyways. And honestly, you know, if you're trying to hide from the cops and stuff like that, as far as looking like you're stealth camping, they know what to look for. I mean, they look for vans just sitting there for a couple days, even if you don't have window shades. It's not hard to spot. Like, I can look out here and, and pretty much tell you the people that are living in their vehicle, potentially. Uh, that, that SUV over there, that white van over there, of course the RV, several other ones here that I'm not going to point out. But I can tell who's living in their van just by looking out here or potentially living in their van, or their car. There are some people that are actually car dwellers out here. So the idea of this is just privacy. Um, so, you know, if you're back here uh, watching TV or something, the light's not going crazy and everyone sees that you're in here. But anyone re re looking for somebody living in a van can easily spot them once they know what they're looking for. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Let's see what it looks like from the front here. You can see... <laughs> Of course, you know, I have it open right now, but with the door shut, and if I seal that, you really can't see. And at night, this is what you'd see. You'd see the blackout. It'd be totally blacked. You know, you, you won't really see what's going on in there. And that's the reason I have the black facing out. You can see the bed is propped up right now because I'm, I'm getting ready to get my kids. So this is going to go up into um, seat mode here. Show you how this, pretty much, I'm going back into seat mode. And you see little blue, now looks like a regular minivan. With a TV, though. <laughs> and a little privacy curtain for the people in the back. Well, until next time, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this uh, quick mini fix to Little Blue's um, curtain system here helpful. The same thing was done for the sides and the rear, just in case you're wondering, okay? So next time, take care. I hope uh, that you're having a good day and staying safe. Bye-bye now.